In this section, our goal is to be able to analyze data to determine the equation of the curve of best fit. Also, to be able to use the curve of best fit to make predictions and solve real world problems. Let's take a look at situation number one. Jane is a researcher at the Department of Agriculture. She has noticed that farmers have a very different crop yield across the country depending on the climate. The graph shown is of her collected data. So notice the x-axis says the average summer temperature and the y-axis shows the crop yield for the farmers. Part A, what type of trend does this data show? So notice that when the temperature gets higher, the crop yield starts to go up, but then it comes back down. The points are not lined up, but rather a bit scattered. Remember that this is called a scatter plot. If we were to connect the points, it wouldn't make a straight line, but we could draw a line that would be curved that goes through approximately many of the points. Remember that when it's curved like a U, upside down or right side up, it's called a parabola and it's for a quadratic function. So what type of trend does this data show? This is a quadratic regression. And the curve that I drew is best fitting the points. This is called a curve of best fit. You may, may remember the term line of best fit that we looked at previously. This is also a scatter plot, and the way to draw the line that best fits this data is going straight up like this, going at a positive slope, a linear function. That's a line when it's a linear regression. A curve of best fit is when we have to curve our line, like this one. This is a curve of best fit, a curved line that goes through many of the points. A curve of best fit is a curve instead of a line that's used to model the trend in data. Trend means how the data looks like it's going, the pattern. Trend is like saying pattern, the pattern of the data. Let's go back to our problem about the crop yield. Part B, what would, the, what would be the best equation to represent this data? Well, notice the four choices. The first choice is a straight line because this is x to the first, but we want x squared. So the first choice only has x to the first, it's not going to be the correct choice. For the other ones, we know these are going to be parabolas, but let's go to our calculator to see which, which is the best graph. Press y equals, let's type in choice b, 0.06x squared minus 2.16x plus 12.84. We can also graph the other two at the same time. Negative x squared plus 36x minus 314. And the third one is negative 0.06x squared plus 2.16x minus 12.84. Now before we go straight to the graph, notice that the x-axis goes way past where it usually goes of 10. It goes all the way out to 30. So we can change our window. So just to keep in mind, we have blue is the first one, red, and then black. So let's go to the window. We're going to hit the button that says window. And we're going to change the x min to 0 and then change the x max to 30 because our x axis only goes from 0 to 30. Let's go ahead now and graph and see which one close, most closely resembles our graph, which of these equations. So that was the first one. 
that's a parabola opening up. So that one's not correct. There's the second one. Notice it's very skinny, whereas this one's wider. And this one is pretty wide. If we look at where it crosses the x-axis, on the graph it looks like a little bit before 10 and a little bit before 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's approximately crossing at 8, which is a little bit before 10. And 30 is here, and that's a little bit before 30. So the red graph that opens down is not good. The black graph is the correct one. And in y equals, remember that was the third choice. So that was the third one that we plugged in. C. At approximately what temperature did the farmers yield the most crops? Let's answer that before we get to the second question. The most crops. Well, the y-axis tells us about the crop yield. So where is the highest points? Right about here. At what temperature is that approximately? Kind of between 15 and 20, but closer to 20. So a little bit around 18 degrees Celsius. At what temperature did farmers yield the least crops? So again, looking at the crops, we're looking for the lowest numbers. About here, also about here. So that's around 8 and 28. So 8 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius. And remember, that's just approximately. That means we're estimating. It's not going to be exact. So again, this is called a curve of best fit when our scatter plot looks like it's curving. Sometimes, though, we're not given a picture, but we're given data in a table. Let's read situation number two. The table shows students' test scores and how many hours per night they stay awake studying. The data shows a quadratic regression. Number of hours per night studying. Notice as the hours per night studying go up, the test scores start low, but then they increase, but then they start to decrease. Why do you think that is? Shouldn't it be that just as we study more, our test grades keep going up? Consider, though, that this is hours per night. So instead of sleeping, now we're studying too much. Sometimes we need to let our bodies rest and sleep so we don't tire ourselves out and we can think. A. What is an equation that most closely represents a curve of best fit for the data. We've done this for line of best fit, similar calculator instructions. Let's review what we need to do for curve of best fit. So our calculator instructions tell us we need to enter data. We're going to go to stat and then choose number one for edit. Stat and choice one for edit. Then I'm going to enter in the top for list one and the bottom for list two. Zero, one, enter, three, enter, four, enter, five, enter, six, enter. Go over to enter the test scores. 20, enter, 65, 90, 80, 68, and 61. We'll double check that we've entered correctly. Looks good. Now we get the equation by going to stat, over to the right for calc, calculate. This time I want a quadratic regression. Remember when they say curve of best fit, it's going to be because it's a quadratic function. Curving is for a quadratic function for us. So we want quadratic regression. Choice five is quadratic regression. Choose five. Notice it says quadratic regression. Scroll down or keep pressing enter to get to calculate and then press enter. Now I'm going to 
write down what my calculator shows me. Y equals to begin AX squared. The A is negative 5.039. So let's round to negative 5.04. Then it says x squared. Then it says plus bx. The b is 34.98. So 34.98x. And then plus c. c is approximately 26.29. So plus 26.29. And there is my equation. Part B, using this trend, which is this equation, what could be the test score for a student who spends two hours studying per night? So remember, the number of hours studying per night was the x. So x is two, and we're looking for the test score. The test score is the y. What is the y? Now something you might be noticing now is it doesn't say x and y, but it says h and t. We can write this function with those value variables instead. Remember, we called this y and this x. So where the y is, we can put t, and where the x is, we can put h, like this. Let's go ahead and plug in the 2 into where the x is in our equation or where the h is, and that'll give us the test score. t equals negative 5.04 instead of h or x, we'll put 2 squared plus 34.98 times 2 instead of h and plus 26.29. Now let's go type that in and see what value we get. Here we've plugged it in. It says 76.09. So approximately, the test score would be a 76. Take a couple of minutes to write a short summary. Explain when it might be useful to use a curve of best fit. See you in class.